Nuclear fusion is the process by which two light atomic nuclei combine to form a single heavier one while releasing massive amounts of energy. Our Sun and other stars generate energy through nuclear fusion. While it might be naturally occurring, we haven't been able to recreate the process here on Earth. Recently, however, Germany's plasma research facility has set a new record with its new nuclear fusion reactor, demonstrating that we are moving closer to the wonderful objective of fusion power. Let's take a look at how we can exploit nuclear fusion power as a clean, renewable source of energy. Before we start with the video, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. Turn on the bell for the latest notifications and updates. With that said, let's jump right into today's video. Nuclear fusion is the holy grail of an energy source. Fusion energy has the potential to be a clean, green, and renewable source of energy if successfully implemented. Fusion connects atoms rather than separating them as nuclear fission reactors do. Thus, no hazardous radioactive waste is produced. Scientists at Germany's Max Planck Institute for Plasma Physics turned on an experimental reactor and produced hydrogen plasma in a device. This device is called the Wendel Stein 7x Stellarator. The Stellarator is made to hold plasma formed by smashing hydrogen atoms together and blasting them with microwaves until the matter reaches temperatures of 100 million degrees, at which point the nuclei of the atoms fuse to form helium. The entire process generates energy and reflects what occurs at the Sun's core. The Stellarator's donut-shaped core, in essence, forms a miniature star. The device debuted in late 2015 at the Max Planck Institute, demonstrating that it could keep a loop of helium ions heated to a million degrees in situ for a tenth of a second. The helium ions racing through the plasma reached a searing at 40 million degrees Kelvin, four times hotter than in the following experiments, when 18 times more energy was supplied into the W7X. As a point of reference, the Sun's surface only reaches a temperature of 5,505 degrees Celsius. Fusion energy is the most promising energy source of the future because it doesn't produce the same radiation troubles as atom-splitting power. Fusion is therefore the cleanest kind of energy generation. There are two types of machines that are promising and can make fusion energy the future. The W7X is one of them. The electromagnetic fields generated by the resultant plasma used by machines like MIT's Alcator CMOD Tokamak to help keep the writhing jelly donut of charged particles in line. With the hot slam dancing cloud of particles in place, fuel injection produces incredible amounts of energy. However, it's plagued by instabilities that make power generation a fleeting affair. Meanwhile, stellarators like the W7X use banks of magnetic coils to contain the plasma, giving them more control and allowing the hot ring of helium jelly to swirl for longer periods, even though they don't quite match the output of the Tokamak. W7X's 15-meter-wide machine appears to have shown as a method to bridge that gap. The ETA nuclear reactor is another technology that is expected to usher in a new era of nuclear fusion power. ETA is the world's first and largest machine of its kind, currently being built in Katarash, a French scientific research center specializing in nuclear power research. The machine would produce 500 megawatts of power by fusing two different types of hydrogen referred to as deuterium and tritium. That's 10 times the amount of energy it would take to run. ETA, when finished, will have a diameter of 100 feet and a height of 100 feet, making it a new type of nuclear fusion device. It will be the world's largest magnetic confinement plasma physics experiment and the largest experimental tokamak nuclear fusion reactor when the reactor and first plasma are completed in late 2025. Lowering neoclassical losses is an important task for stellarator optimization in order to catch up with the tokamak's good confinement properties. As a result, Wendelstein 7X's magnetic field was engineered to reduce those losses. Wendelstein 7X has already been able to generate high-temperature plasmas and set the Stellarator world record for the fusion products at high temperature using the heating equipment available thus far. This combination of temperature plasma density and energy confinement duration shows how near you can come to the values for a burning plasma. Analysis of such a record plasma has now been completed in great detail. Although turbulent losses were negligible at these high plasma temperatures, neoclassical losses accounted for 30% of the heating power, making them a significant contributor to the energy balance. A thought experiment has now demonstrated the effects of Wendelstein 7X neoclassical optimization. It was anticipated that in plants with a less optimized magnetic field, the same plasma values and profiles led to the record achievement in Wendelstein 7X were also attained. Then, the projected neoclassical losses were computed, yielding a clear result. They would be more than the input heating power, which is physically impossible. This means that the plasma profile seen in Wendelstein 7X are only possible under low neoclassical loss magnetic fields. 
The opposite is also true, adjusting the Wendelstein magnetic field successfully reduced in neoclassical losses. Tokamaks, on the other hand, have significant disadvantages. A transformer can only drive a current across the plasma in brief pulses, which is insufficient for a commercial fusion reactor. Current in the plasma can sometimes falter abruptly, causing disruptions which are rapid losses of plasma confinement that can unleash magnetic forces strong enough to damage the reactor. Even newer designs like the spherical tokamak are plagued by such issues. Stellarators, on the other hand, are exempt as there is no circulating plasma current. The fields generated by external coils do not need to be pulsed. Some teams have stuck with the concept because of these two factors. The power generated is virtually clean because the reactor does not produce heat by splitting atoms in a controlled nuclear reaction. Even though the Wendelstein 7X would not produce energy on its own, it will eventually be used to create a stellarator reactor that can run indefinitely, moving us closer and closer to a world of almost limitless energy provided by the same process that drives the sun. That's all for this video. Hope you enjoyed watching this one. Thanks for watching.